Good morning. It's time to get lamp. It's the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Listen, coming up on today's show, Senate District 36 candidates, Attorney Sean Kent and Representative Kevin Johnson, they're here, plus all of the entertainment tea and more. I'm about to spill it. It's the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. It's time to get lamp. <laughs> Here we go. Somebody turn the lamp on. All right, well, it's time for the entertainment tea. And as I always do, hey, I'm going to spill it. I've got so much, I'm going to get right to it. Hope we can get it all in. First of all, let's talk. Bobby Christina. Okay, so let me give you the story real quick. According to TMZ.com, Bobby Christina was involved in an accident. They're saying that Bobby Christina um, and, her, of course, her alleged boyfriend, Nick Gordon, were in a car accident, a one-car accident, because there was an argument going on, okay? They were not caught and nothing happened. That was on Sunday. On Thursday, well, actually on Wednesday, it was said, oh, okay, the cops were called to their location, their vicinity, for another call, but while they were over there, they see the Camaro, which Nick was driving, which is damaged, in Bobby Christina's yard. And so according to Radar Online, what do they do? They begin to ask questions and start an investigation. Now, hey, from what we're told, there's no law saying a damaged vehicle can't be on per private property. So I don't exactly know what you're trying to do with that. Cops, take a seat. All right, who else needs to take a seat? Matt Lauer. What are you talking about, Jeffrey? NBC Today Show. Okay, so the Today Show, of course, Matt Lauer is making $25 million. That's a lot of money, $25 million. And y'all talk about a recession. There's no recession in Lauer world. Okay, so $25 million. And they're saying that if the ratings don't rise for the Today Show, that's right, if the ratings don't rise, then they're going to ask him to take a pay cut. My thing is this, he can afford to take a pay cut. Jay Leno did it. You know what, Jay? You know, good for you, Jay Leno. Why? Because when you sow good seeds and you do good things to make sure that your staff doesn't get cut, good things are going to come back to you. Who else has good things coming to them? I don't know why, but I'm talking about Honey Boo Boo Child. That's right, Elena Thompson. Everyone seems to be into this show. Matter of fact, the Honey Boo Boo Child show, or keeping up with Elena Thompson, keeping up with Honey Boo Boo, actually garnered more ratings than the Republican National Convention. So that tells me America is watching. And so now they're gonna plan a Halloween special, a Thanksgiving special, a Christmas special. I don't wanna see nothing about anybody rolling in the trash, but I guess it's gonna be quite entertaining. You know what I think about this show, why you all love it so much? Yes, you, you know you watch the show. Let me tell you why you love it so much. You love it because it makes you feel like, hey, the situation that I'm in, it's not as bad as it appears to be. All right, another show that you watch that I enjoy, of course, is The Jeffrey Lamp Can Fix. Scandal, wasn't it good? And now we know who Quinn Per, exactly. Quinn Perkins, I was like, oh my goodness. Kerry Washington, you know what, good for you. Excellent performance. Shout out to Shonda Rhimes. Shonda, you're giving us great TV. Of course, that's 10 p.m. You've got to watch 10 p.m. Scandal every Thursday night. I'm gonna be on Facebook. I'm gonna be blogging about it. We're gonna be talking about it because it's just that good. Who else needs to take a seat? Sherman Hemsley. All right, so Sherman Hemsley, of course, he's moved on up to the far east side. However, his estate is in conflict right now. What are you talking about, Jeffrey? Well, his estate is in conflict because um, this man has come out and said that he's his brother. So now we're suing for paternity, and, uh, for a paternity test to see exactly if there is some type of correlation with a relation. Hey, I think this is all a big mess. Over $50,000, it's just too much, just too much. All right, listen, that's all I got time for. Listen, the Jeffrey Lampkin Show, we're still sending two viewers to Charlotte, North Carolina. Take a look. Charlotte, North Carolina, www.jeffreylampkin.com or the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Go register. Tell us what you like about our page. Go to Facebook right now. You have the chance to go to Charlotte, North Carolina and win that trip. And last but not least, 
hey, do you think you have talent? Are you looking for producers to produce you? The ultimate talent search. You can only find information about it on the Jeffrey Lampkin Show, but producers from all around America are gonna be in Charleston, South Carolina. Tell them the Jeffrey Lampkin Show sent you. It's gonna be great. I know it's tight, but it's right. That's all I have time for. The tea has been spilled. Coming up, the hottest political debate here in South Carolina, Senate District 36. It's happening right here on the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. You've been Lamp. Coffee cups up, pinkies out. Good morning. If you had your own ideal presidential, vice presidential nominee from any celebrities, who would it be? Oh man, that's a tough one. Hmm, that's a really good question. Celebrities? <laughs> okay, my president would be Mark Wahlberg. Mark I love Wahlberg. him today. <laughs> okay, and who would your vice president be? Probably Kanye West. I'm a really big Spike Lee fan. Spike okay, Lee. Spike Lee for president. And uh, Tyler Perry for vice president. Tyler Perry for vice president. Richard Gere. And George Clooney. Well, I was going to say George Clooney is vice president. I like George Clooney, okay. but I'm not sure I would vote for him as president. Uh, Jay-Z. For vice president, I would vote Beyonce. Beyonce and Jay-Z. Jay-Z and Beyonce. Hands, uh, hands down. I would say Jay-Z. He has a lot invested. Okay. Um, who else? Oprah, yeah. She's a good candidate. Oprah Winfrey. And who will be vice? Uh, me? Paris Hilton, because that would just crack me up so hard. Okay. And she'd probably actually get a lot of votes. Denzel Washington. <laughs> vice president would be Samuel Jackson. Henry Rollins is president. Nicholas Cage, like him. Uh, I don't know, Jeff Bridges, and let's just go with Shia LaBeouf. Cannon & Graves is a proud sponsor of the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Located at 1837 Wilson Road in Newberry, Cannon & Graves has the perfect certified used car for you. Their extensive inventory has something in every price range, and they can get everyone financed, regardless of credit. All cars come with a warranty to give you the peace of mind you deserve. Come see Steve and Reggie and find your new car at Cannon and Graves. Good morning, and we're back here on the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Listen, put your coffee cups down right now because we're about to have some good, solid television. What are you talking about, Jeffrey? Senate District 36. Of course, November is right around the corner. We need to make sure that you are aware of your political candidates and exactly, you know, the man behind the man, but also where they stand on the issues. And I'm excited this morning that I have here with me two of the candidates for Senate District 36, Representative Kevin Johnson and Attorney Sean Kitt. Good morning to you, fellas. Good morning. How good are morning, you all this morning? Good. Doing How are you doing? Good, doing good, fine, good, good, good. We're excited that you're here and I'm not going to waste any time, viewers, because I know that you're ready to get to it, so we're going to get right to it. Right before the show started, we actually did a number toss, and the number toss was won by Representative Johnson. And so what we're going to do is we're going to propose the first question to him. There was one prepared question that you, the viewers, were able to send in, and we chose this question as the prepared question that we're going to give first to Representative Johnson. And the question is, with the current state of the education system, should public tax dollars be used as an option to fund private education? Yeah, great question and I want to just begin by thanking you for having us here. I think it's important for the voters to have a chance to know more about us and also congratulate you on your new show. Thank you. Pleased to be here. Um, I want to preface my remarks by saying that I am not against private school. I have a lot of friends who have uh, who send their students to private schools mm -hmm. but um, my answer to that question would be no and that's because um, well, the main reason why is because we are not uh, funding public education to the extent that the law calls for. Okay. Although we have increased the base student cost per student to $2,012 this year, we're still about seven, dollars $800 less than where we should be. Uh, the bill that was introduced this year that would allow parents to receive tax credits or vouchers to send their children to private schools would have cost the state $90 million, mm -hmm. and it was not paid for. And I just couldn't see supporting a bill to that magnitude when we're not funding public education as we should. And I would add to that that uh, despite what we may read or we may think, public education is in a lot better shape than what some people think it is. Wow, okay. Attorney Kent, the same question for you with the current state of the education system. Should public tax dollars be used as an option to fund private education? Jeff, along with Representative Johnson, I want to say thank you so much for having us. Thank Very you. much appreciate it. It's an excellent forum for the people to get to know us. And more importantly, you look like a big old piece of red velvet cake. Yes, I told you a little bit <laughs> yes. red velvet. <laughs> Somebody with cream cheese frosting <laughs> feeding me this morning. I'm hungry on a Sunday morning. All right. Jeff, it, it's, a, it's a wonderful question. Um, and the answer is, simple mm -hmm. answer is no um, 
the way that our public school system is set up, the voucher system is what your question really mm -hmm. talks about. Um, there was an economist, I think it was in the 1950s, I think his name was Milton Friedman, mm -hmm. who was trying to figure out a way to make our system work better, our educational system work in the best possible way. And mm -hmm. so what he was trying to do is try to build a system in which public schools competed against each other, almost like a Clemson, Carolina, saying mm -hmm. Clemson is doing so good, so let's make Carolina do a little bit better. Clemson well, has cars. a bowling alley, so we're going to bowling alley in Carolina. Right. And so they wanted to, to get that competition mm -hmm. with the public schools. And what they were doing was they made the suggestion that if we allowed parents to take their kids out of public schools and put them into private schools, it'll make the public schools work harder. Mm -hmm. When well, in theory that works, but in practical application it doesn't. There's no study, there's no statistics anywhere out there whatsoever that says it's working. I think it hurts kids if you take them out because it's going to hurt the less advantaged kids who's left in the public school, who can't afford the transportation, who can't afford to leave, who can't go to the private school. Okay, all right, and that's time. All right, moving to the next question, and this question actually goes first to you, Representative um, Attorney Kent. What is the biggest problem that's facing your district, and what is your plan to solve it? Again, simple one-word answer is the biggest problem is jobs. People in our district are broke. It's and it, we're very fortunate in this campaign to go up and down um, the interstate because it goes right up and down 95 and talk to people and ask them what they want and they want jobs and they want jobs brought back to the district and it's the most difficult thing for anyone any senator any representative bring jobs back to his constituency um, my plan is simple it's not complicated it's utilizing my voice utilizing my charisma utilizing my charm and trying to get out there and convincing industries convincing businesses to come back the old school way we used to do it mm -hmm. by sending out an economic economic development board to send and encourage businesses to come back to the community there's a line that I saw in the movie Batman begins in which the Batman character said as a man I can't do much but as a symbol I can do much for the community mm -hmm. as a man Sean Kent can't convince a Boeing a, a plant to come back to Clarendon Sumter Florence Timmonville but as Senator Sean Ken, a symbol, I can get those meetings, I can get the phone calls and make them come back and invest in the community. Okay, same question for you, Representative Johnson. What do you think is the biggest problem that's facing your district and what is your plan to solve it? Well, Sean's exactly right. The, the biggest problem right now, as it is throughout the state of South Carolina and throughout our country, is jobs and economic development. My plans, and I think the solution is to do what I've done over the last 25 years in positions that I've held previously, especially when I was mayor of Manning, and you have to make sure that you have the things that prospective job providers are looking for. You have to have the water sewer infrastructure. You have to have the natural gas. Uh, it helps that we have railway. We have the interstate. We have the lake. You have to have the amenities that these folks are looking for because this economy is going to turn around. And people are going to look for places to put their jobs and to uh, hire people. And one of the biggest things we have going for us is, again, our education system, which also includes Central Carolina uh, Technical College in Clarendon County. And you have over in, um, in, in uh, Darlington County a uh, rural school district, which is one of the best school districts in the state. So we have to make sure that we have what folks are looking for because the time is coming soon, I think, when the economy is going to pick up. And we have to make sure that we're positioned to take advantage of what's being offered. Okay. All right. Next question going to you, Representative Johnson. The benefits for senior citizens. Now, senior citizens, it's a hot button in your area. What can you in, um, do to ensure that we're going to have proper health care options for our elders? Right. We have to make sure that we take care of our citizens, as they say, from the cradle to the grave. And a lot of times our senior citizens are left out. We have senior citizens that have uh, legitimate needs. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was with Black River Healthcare, I was so pleased we were able to offer quality health care at affordable rates. We had a sliding scale, and they paid according to their ability to pay. Uh, one of the biggest issues we're facing now with our seniors is our nursing homes. Our nursing homes have beds. Our senior citizens have needs for those beds, but because of budget cuts in the Medicaid program, the funding is not there. So we have, first of all, senior citizens who are in nursing homes that are being forced to leave, and we have those that need that kind of care. The families don't have time to provide because they're working and doing other things, but they want to make sure they have care for their loved ones. And so we have to make sure that we budget, and when we, when we budget our dollars, we have to make sure that we include the needs of our senior citizens. Okay. All right, and Attorney Kent, same question for you. Benefits of senior citizens, hot button in the area. What can you do that's going to ensure that there's proper health care options for our elders? Uh, let me preface that and make sure. We always ask the question, what can I do mm -hmm. or what can we do? And the first thing that we can always do is listen. And, and 
Representative Johnson said it perfectly. When you go into the nursing homes, when you go into the facilities, you listen to the people and you listen to the problems that they have. And they are concerned. And I was in a nursing home the other day and one of the major concerns are they're following national politics and they're concerned about these Romney plans and the vouchers that they're trying to give to the senior citizens and say, we're going to give you a voucher, but this is only going to cover so much of your medical problems. We're going to get rid of the Medicaid system, but we're going to give you this voucher system and you might have two hundred, three hundred, four thousand dollars on top of it you have to pay. What we can do is listen to those concerns of the senior citizens and then when we get to Columbia, battle those bills like crazy. Get rid of those bills and make sure we're not cutting the funding to Medicaid, Medicare, things that our seniors need more than anything. Okay. All right. Well, that's all that we have time for right now. Hot. It's so hot and juicy in this studio. I don't know what to do with myself right now. And I know we got more questions. We're going to come back, give you the opportunity to really get to know your candidate. We're going to go for the man behind the man because that's how we do here on the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Listen, coffee cups up, pinkies out. I know you're getting ready for church, but hold it right there. We'll be right back. Good morning. Jeffrey Lampkin. <laughs> Somebody turn the lamp on. If you love what Jeffrey is wearing each week, go see Dr. Terrence Tyndall at Jerome and Company. Don't worry, ladies. They carry women's clothing, too, so you can look your best every day. For beautiful casual and dress attire for men and ladies, go to the Columbia Style Leader, Jerome and Company. Jeffrey Lampkin. <laughs> all right, and we're back here on the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Listen, it's time to get lamp. We've been lamping you all morning long. Of course, we're talking about the Senate District 36 um, candidate position. And of course, Representative Kevin Johnson and Attorney Kent are here. And you heard them in the first half. It was getting hot. So we had to take a commercial break. But we're back. So put those coffee cups down. And we're now going to Attorney Kent. And we want to ask you a question. And the question is this. Name one strength of your opponent. I... And this isn't a hard one, this isn't a difficult one. It's something that I've envied from Kevin from the day that I've met him. He is a strong family man. Um, his family support is unparalleled. You see him with his family in the community. It's beautiful. Uh, I'm a single bachelor. I don't have a family. I don't have a wife. I don't have children. But I, I see Kevin on the campaign trail with his beautiful wife, his lovely daughters, his children. And I love the fact that they stick together because especially the way the United States is the state of South Carolina. We don't have the family structure the way we should. So when you see a strong, powerful black man with his beautiful family and the fact that he loves them, he adores them and will do anything for them, there's nothing stronger. And I don't think there's anyone in our campaign, and I'll tell it to anyone who listens, there's nobody who's running against him who can say anything stronger than that. What about you? For Attorney Kent, what's the one strength of your opponent? Well, first I need to thank Sean for that because that does, <laughs> no, really, at fa family it. does mean a lot to us and, and everything we do, we do together as a family. We mm -hmm. just went out yesterday and had a good family. We have three birthdays this month and just wow. went out and just celebrated birthdays as a family. Did you have red velvet family. cake? Uh, we did. <laughs> I wasn't there. I wasn't in the midst. <laughs> we didn't. But I would have loved to have had red velvet cake. But with I appreciate that because frosting. the family is working very yeah. hard with the campaign. Uh, one thing about Sean, I, I, I met Sean and I think the first time I heard Sean's voice was after the seat came open. Mm -hmm. And one thing I can say about Sean from uh, the time that I met him earlier this year is that he is a people person. Mm -hmm. A lot of folks talk about how friendly and how outgoing and how nice he is. And as he alluded to earlier about his charisma and his charm, that's Sean Kent. And I really feel like he has made that impression on people we go around and talk to. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, when you're running or when you're dealing with elections and campaigns, you have to be a people person. Mm -hmm. And I will give him that and I will say that he's a people person second to none okay and the part two of that question would be this um what's one weakness of your opponent well I don't know if I would necessarily call it a weakness but I think that um well that I know for a fact that experience matters okay. and uh, I've been involved in serving on different boards and commissions and elected elected officers for almost 30 years mm -hmm. and I think that uh this, this is new to Sean and I think that that he doesn't have the experience as far as public service. Mm -hmm. I know he's an outstanding attorney and uh, you know, but you, you have to kind of, you have to kind of have gone through some things as far as service. And I think that, um, that he may lack experience uh, only as far as the public official is concerned, I would say. Okay. And what would you say is one weakness of your opponent? So it's a difficult question that you tell somebody to be nice and then you ask them <laughs> to say something <laughs> mean about them right That's afterwards. what we do on the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. <laughs> As far as politics are concerned, when we talk about weaknesses, um, all we have to do is look at a person's past history. Now, Mr. Johnson has an outstanding voting record of what he's done since he's been in the House. My concern, however, has been, and, and I've been very open about this, 
a voting record is one thing. Standing up and fighting for people is completely different. Mm -hmm. Now, he's only been in the House for one, not even a full term, a half term. So it's kind of difficult to say, okay, you haven't stood up and fought as hard as you could in a half term. Mm -hmm. But these are battles. You know, a House term only is two years and you're in there for a year. When did you get up and fight for us? And, you know, and, and that's a concern that I have. It, anyone can go in there and raise their hand and vote or hit a button and vote. What we want is somebody who's going to step up and say, this is what I fought for. This is the bill I introduced. I know I didn't have a law of time, but I fought this hard. And that's my concern. Mm -hmm. um, a vote's a vote, but a fight is something completely different. Okay. So we're going to, whoo, all right, it's hot in here, it's hot in here. But listen, the viewers, so we had opportunity, viewers have been emailing us here at the Jeffrey Lampkin Show at gmail.com. Always go ahead and hit that button and send us an email. But they've been emailing us for questions that they wanted to ask you all just to get to know the man behind the man. So first question goes to you, Representative Johnson. What's your favorite childhood cartoon? You know, um, and I was talking to somebody about this just the other day. Okay. I was never a big fan of cartoons. I really wasn't. I was into westerns and those types of things. Westerns. But there was one cartoon, <laughs> one cartoon okay. that I really liked, and it was the Pink Panther. And okay. I'll tell you why. I just thought the Pink Panther was just cool. Okay. He was just a very, very cool in the character. Okay. And I and I enjoyed that, so I would have to say the Pink Panther. Let me get, car um, let me, because you said westerns, and I know that I have a lot of westerns fans out there. So what western do you like? Were you ba a Bonanza I man? like Bonanza. I, I like Bonanza. Big Valley. Okay. I like the Rifleman. I liked all of them. Oh, uh, my father was in the westerns, and our favorite movie was The Magnificent Seven, and I just always like westerns. So do you have the western channel now? I do. I look at Wii TV, and, I, I and, 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 and every day I'm, <laughs> I'm watching sorry. all of those great <laughs> shows, and, and, I, and I, I just just always like westerns. I love it. Okay, what about you? What was your favorite childhood cartoon? I love cartoons, but there's no doubt about it. My favorite were the Super Friends. Anyone in Clarendon County knows I actually have Superman on the back of my license wow. plate. I love superheroes. Okay. And no one's ever asked me to question why, but the reason I love superheroes and the reason I have Superman is I believe in heroes and I believe that people should do everything they can do to help each other and there's some people who can be your heroes. And so I got a hero complex that okay. I want to help people as much as possible. But love I love it. Superman, love, love Super it. Friends. All right, another question. What's your favorite dream car? My dream car? Mm -hmm. Anyone that's paid for. <laughs> 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 With this economy, give me a paid for car, and that's my dream car. That works for you. What about you? Favorite dream car? I will tell you, I, I drive a, um, a, a Chevrolet Avalanche that was um, ordered uh, special from the factory, um, personalized or whatever. Mm -hmm. And everybody thinks it's an Escalade, but the Escalade pickup is my good. favorite favorite That's vehicle great. and wow. one of the days I hope to be able to have one. Wow, okay. <laughs> that works for me. Listen, fellas, we're having a wonderful time here on the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. We're talking about it. Senate District 36. Listen, so you've got the chance to hear where they stand on the issues, but at the same time, you got the opportunity to meet to meet the man behind the men. Yeah, that's what we do here on the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. We're going to come back, give them the opportunity to give you one final statement. Keep it right here. It's the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. You've been laughing. Good morning. Every week, Monica Hilton makes fabulous treats for the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. The Cake Lady will happily make your favorite dessert for you, too. Give her a call at 803-466-3795. Follow her on Facebook and check out thecakeladysc.com to see more of her amazing work. Jeffrey Lampkin. <laughs> All right, we're back here on the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. It's almost over, but I'm not going to go without letting the candidates get one final word. Of course, Representative Kevin Johnson and Attorney Sean Kent, who are both running for Senate District 36, are here on this morning. Listen, fellas, I want to ask you two quick questions. First question goes to you, Attorney Kent. If you ran for president and you were forced to choose a celebrity running mate, who would you choose? Halle Berry. All right, if you ran for President Representative Johnson and you were forced to choose a celebrity running mate, who would you choose? Wow, I... I'd really, I'd say Beyonce. Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Both beautiful women. Oh, See, yeah. that makes me excited right there. <laughs> Last one, Representative Johnson, if you were to choose a theme song for your campaign, what would it be? There's a song out by Mary Mary, mm -hmm. uh, Come Get Your Blessing. Go get it. Go get it. Yes. That would be my theme song. I want y'all to turn that on before you leave right now. Go turn that on as soon as the show is over. Don't turn it on right now. Attorney Kent, I what have would the be tiger. your theme song? I, I have the tiger, tiger Survivor. All right, so you're eyeing it. All right, listen, so I'm going to give you both the opportunity um, real quick to the viewers, and we're going to start with Attorney Kent. Why should the viewers choose Sean Kent for Senate District 36? The, and Representative Johnson brought it out, the knock on me has been my experience, but what I tell people is I've been experiencing this job for the last 13 years. I've been practicing law in the district. As an attorney, what we have to do is go into homes and convince mothers that it's okay for their children to go away for five years. It's you go into courtrooms and you convince people who don't have money in their pockets to give your clients millions of dollars. You convince juries to let murderers go, rapists go, child molesters go. 
I've spent my entire life and my entire career fighting for people who can't fight for myself. Mm -hmm. So it's time for me to step up and go to Columbia and fight for everybody in the district, not just the chosen few. So I've been doing this for 13 years, so it's time to just do it a little more difficulty. Okay. All right, Representative Johnson, why Kevin Johnson for Senate District 36? Well, first and foremost, as I said earlier, experience does matter. Mm -hmm. And I'm the only candidate in this race that has the uh, experience to go to Columbia, get the job done. Uh, despite what Sean said earlier about uh, not being a fighter, people who know me know that I've been just that for the last 25 years on behalf of constituents of this whole area. Every position I've held from my being a Cub Scout at eight years old, I've been elevated to leadership. Most of the things I've been involved in, I've been elected chairman or president like of the Municipal Association of South Carolina or president of the South Carolina Council of Black Mayors. And in the House, as a freshman legislator, you don't have the opportunity to get up there and rant and rave, but how you get things done is working through those who have the experience, build a network. If you want to build past as a freshman, you have to work with those who have the seniority and the authority, and that's how you get things done. But I'm known to be a leader, to be a fighter. I've been here uh, throughout my years, and, and I think people recognize that and they understand that experience does matter. Well, gentlemen, you've heard it here. Ladies and gentlemen, Senate District 36, you've heard the issues, you've heard the men talk, but the best thing that you can do right now is go make a decision. It's time to vote. Rock the vote. Make it happen. Gentlemen, thank you both thank so, you so much, much for being here thank on this so morning. Yeah, absolutely. Pleasure. Listen, it's been an awesome journey right here on the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Coffee cups up. Pinky's out. We'll be back. You've been Lamp. Good morning. Momo's Bistro, now serving lunch Tuesday through Friday from 1130 to 2 and Sunday brunch from 1030 to 230. Classic Southern food with classic French preparation. Dijon and shallot encrusted New York strip, fresh seafood over local green salad and vegetables, and so much more. In a comfortable yet elegant setting. Momo's Bistro, 2930 Divine Street. Wow, another amazing show. Listen, I've had a ball with you. Yes, you, on today. I know you're getting ready, you're about to go to church, you're getting your Sunday dinner done, you just finished breakfast. Let me tell you real quick, word of the day, choice. Choice is defined according to Webster as the unrestricted freedom to choose. You have a right to choose. That's the beautiful thing about living in America, the land of the free, the home of the brave. You choose. Where am I going to become educated at? You choose. What am I going to eat? You choose. What am I going to wear to church this morning? Choice. It's a beautiful thing. Embrace your choice. Embrace your decision. Listen, it's election 2012. Come on, make a choice today. You have the right to choose. Choose who you will be today. Will you be that cheerful, joyful person? Or will you be woo woo woo? Listen, that's all I have time for. It's been great. It's been a fun ride. It's the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. You've been Lamp. Good morning. <laughs>